The Model 3462 Forestry Monitor provides an extremely rugged, durable design ideal for brush and wildland firefighting. This compact monitor features a fully sealed, integrated electrical control system with waterproof locking connectors for all motor, power, and control connections in order to withstand harsh environments. The high-speed motor provides proportional speed control for pinpoint stream positioning and accuracy. With a wide range of available nozzles, the 3462 is ideal for use in water, foam, and CAFS applications. During this educational video, we will review some of the available features for the forestry monitor and take a closer look at the effect those choices have on the setup and wiring of the system. In addition, we will cover some basic troubleshooting tips and take a look at where to find additional literature and documentation for this and other Akron Brass products. The CAN Proportional Speed Control Joystick is a standard controller for the forestry monitor and features a simple plug-and-play setup. In addition to controlling the electrically actuated nozzles that are available for the forestry monitor, the trigger on the joystick can be used to actuate a ball valve to control the flow of water to the monitor. The wireless remote control is an available option for the forestry monitor. If this option is chosen, it requires different wiring, with the exception of the power cable, since you will need to build a CAN network for the controllers and monitor. Our example in this presentation is a setup with a control joystick as well as a wireless remote control. To build the CAN network in this example, you will need the following wiring harnesses. The CAN device stub harness, the forestry monitor harness, and the CAN wireless harness. Please note, with this CAN setup, that in addition to supplying power to the monitor, there is also power input on the harness for the joystick and the wireless unit, since power is not sent over the CAN network. Also, on the wireless harness, only the CAN plug and the vehicle power and ground wires need to be hooked up for the unit to operate properly. In addition to the specific wiring harnesses mentioned earlier, Every CAN network makes use of terminating resistors, one at each end of the network, as well as network T's and generic CAN cables to connect those T's. This network begins with a terminating resistor and the forestry monitor harness on one side of the T, and a CAN cable running to the next network T in the setup. Since each device needs to be tied into the CAN network, there needs to be another network T for the joystick, along with a CAN cable going to the next part of the network. The last network T in this example has the CAN cable and the harness for the wireless module on the left, and since this ends the CAN network, the second and final terminating resistor is on the right side of the network T. The forestry monitor's plug-and-play feature makes it easy to set up and also lessens the amount of troubleshooting that is required to diagnose an issue. We will begin the troubleshooting tips section by explaining the most useful troubleshooting tool available, the status indicator LEDs on the base of the joystick housing. The green ready LED is on whenever the controller is receiving power. The yellow receive LED should also be lit but blinks rapidly in response to ongoing status update requests from the monitor. Lastly, the red transmit LED lights up while a signal is being sent by the joystick, for instance, telling the monitor to move left or right. Knowing the purpose for these LEDs should give you a good idea of where to start looking if a problem arises. Now, let's take a look at some example problems. If the monitor is connected to a power source but the green LED on the joystick does not come on, that indicates that there is a break in a wire or connection somewhere in the system. Use a multimeter and backtrack from where the wiring harness plugs into the joystick. If that connection has power, the joystick is at fault. If not, work backwards towards the power cable. If you suspect one of the cables is at fault, the continuity function on the multimeter can be used to check for a break in the cable. Another potential issue that can occur is if when the monitor is powered up, it moves all the way in one direction of travel without any input from the user. If the joystick is in the centered or neutral position and the red transmit LED light is on, then the joystick needs to be replaced. Remember that the red LED indicates the joystick is sending a command to the monitor. 
Please note, however, that the transmit LED is very sensitive in regard to what it considers the neutral position. During normal operation, if you move the joystick to control the monitor and let go of it, it will return toward the neutral position and the monitor will stop moving, but the transmit light may still be on if it is not returned to the exact center of travel. In this example, the system is powered up and the joystick is transmitting, but the monitor doesn't respond at all, or it responds but goes dead when it is moved to a certain position in its range of motion. In both cases, the monitor is not responding to commands from the joystick, but this may be caused by two different problems and can have different clues as to what is wrong. If the monitor stops responding when it moves to a certain position, and flexing or wiggling the wiring causes the monitor to temporarily respond, then either the wiring harness attached to the monitor or the joystick cable need to be replaced. If the monitor does not respond at all and the yellow receive LED is off, then the joystick cable needs to be checked for continuity. Another way to check if the joystick cable is good or not is to take one of the plugs and measure the resistance between pins 3 and 4. If you do not get a reading of approximately 60 ohms, then the cable is bad. As the note mentions, if someone attempts to make a replacement cable because they either need a longer one or have lost the original, but doesn't build in the internal resistance, it will not allow the joystick to communicate with the monitor over the CAN wiring. The yellow LED will not be on and the monitor will not respond. The information in this troubleshooting tip will only apply if you are using the trigger on your forestry monitor's joystick to control the opening and closing of a ball valve. If powering up the system causes the valve to open and it closes when the trigger is pressed, then either the sector gear in the electric actuator or the wiring in a connector are reversed and need to be corrected. You can determine if the wiring or sector gear is at fault by looking at what direction the exposed end of the motor shaft turns when the trigger is pressed to open the valve. If the shaft turns clockwise, the wiring is correct and the sector gear needs to be rotated 90 degrees. If it turns counterclockwise, the wiring is at fault. To find additional information, including product flyers, CAD files, specs, and more on the Model 3462 Forestry Monitor, visit our website at akronbrass.com.